A Stuart Models triple expansion engine. This is part one, collecting the engine from Scotland. This Stuart Models triple expansion engine is a thing of great beauty. It was built by a man in Scotland called Ronnie Mall. No relation to Darth Maul off the Star Wars film. Ronnie's surname has an E at the end. These photographs that you're currently looking at were sent to me by Ronnie via email. And as you can see, it is beautiful. Really, really, really beautiful. Ronnie and I agreed a price and I decided I was going to pick up the engine rather than risk posting. And here I am on the road to Scotland. The weather on the way up there was very varied. From the first image to this, it got very wet. And as I went over the top of the mountains, it started snowing. Despite this, after five hours, I arrived in Ronnie's workshop, which is in the loft space of his house. A Myford lathe, a vintage drilling machine, and the centrepiece is a Warco Super Major milling machine, which had to be dismantled when he bought it and brought up into the loft space one piece at a time. I noticed that he had the same bandsaw that I have, as well as a second vertical bandsaw and even a cutter grinder machine. He can do really wonderful things with a machine like this. Unlike my workshop, Ronnie's workshop is incredibly tidy. Oh yes, he's also got a hydraulic press and a sandblasting machine. This amused me, an intelligent modification to a bandsaw. He's driving it with a variable speed electric drill, so he has a variable speed bandsaw. This is the one like I have. It's a bit of a later model, but it's the same thing, a vertical and horizontal bandsaw. They're not brilliant, but they work well. There is so much stuff neatly fitted into such a small space, it's quite a work of art. Here's Ronnie's test boiler, and Ronnie made a video of the triple expansion engine running, using this boiler to supply the steam. Ronnie's channel is called RGM Steam Heed, and heed been the pronunciation of the word head in Scottish, but spelt H-E-E-D. I'll put a link at the front of this video, and I've put it on the screen anyway. This is Ronnie's lathe, it's a Myford Super 7. These are lovely lathes, they're like models in themselves, but they're capable of good work. The Super 7 version has a gearbox and a clutch, as well as other refinements. This walk on milling machine is very impressive. The finish on it is beautiful, and I really am impressed with how tidy Ronnie's workshop is and how clean it is. This milling machine has a power cross feed, even the head goes up and down by power. No need to wind the handle like I have to do. This is a great machine, full of very good refinements. As you can see, this is a Warco Super Major milling machine, and here is the head going up. In a glass cabinet just to the right of the milling machine are some of Ronnie's other models. This is a very nicely made steam wagon, as you can see. The only thing I don't like about steam lorries is you can't really see all of the moving parts. On the bottom shelf in the glass cabinet is a Conway narrow gauge locomotive. Again, made to a very high standard. Far removed from the one I'm currently working on in my workshop. Above the Conway on the middle shelf is a Stuart No. 4 steam engine. And to the right, that is a mini traction engine. On the top shelf from left to right is a Stuart compressor, a Stuart Sirius. The next one I think is a Reeves Warrior. And the small steam engine on the right hand side could be an old Mammod. This is a much bigger than usual linisher, a very good size, far better than the one I've got. Linishers are really useful in a workshop for cleaning up metal parts in general. I've even sharpened drills on them from time to time. The old along with the new, this is an ancient pillar drill, but it works perfectly well. This is one of Ronnie's other engines that he's building. This engine's been made from castings by Brunel models. Just look at the workmanship, it's frighteningly good. So why is this man so good at making models like this? He's 72 years old, he has most of his own hair, unlike mine which is falling out, and is a retired professional mechanical engineer, which explains why he can build things like this. Every part of this engine is tight. There's no slop in any of the valve linkages, no slop anywhere. I'm surprised it even runs. In fact, it still does need running in. Here's a shot of the engine after Ronnie connected an airline and we're about to run it. But the compressor that he has is one of these very noisy ones. Quite unlike my compressor which uses like a fridge compressor on the top of it and is very silent. 
I'm going to stop talking now because the engine is about to burst into life. the drain corks in that cylinder, nothing comes out, the air's gone by that time. So what are the two pumps coupled to the crosshead? The small one is the boiler feed water pump and the large one is a vacuum pump and this would normally be used particularly on a full size steam engine for creating the vacuum in the condenser. Steam engines are much cleverer gadgets than they first appear. As the steam condenses in the condenser, this causes a suction, so not only is the steam pushing the pistons, the vacuum in the condenser is pulling the pistons as well, causing a suction. You can actually turn the steam off and the engine will continue running on the vacuum. Possibly slightly ineffective in a model, but this absolutely beautiful triple expansion engine has one anyway. The engine's making a bit of a knocking noise and this is perfectly normal because if you felt how tight the crankshaft was you would realise that this engine needs quite a lot of running in. The machining tolerances are perfection. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ronnie's wife for making me some lunch. Very nice it was too. Time now for the drive home. By the time I got home it was dark. A 600 mile round trip. Great fun, what a wonderful day. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.